As a man sits on the rooftop, watching the floodwaters rise, a rowboat comes. He says, man, get in the rowboat. The man looks down at the folks and says, it's okay, the Lord will provide. Rowboat goes away. He sits there and the floodwaters rise even higher. And he looks, he sees another rowboat. Rowboat comes up. The folks say, hey, man, get in the rowboat. You know, we'll, we'll get you out of here. And he's like, no, the Lord will provide. And then rowboat goes away. And then the man drowns. And he gets to heaven. And he says, God, why did you let me drown? He says, I sent you two rowboats. After the <laughs> goblin shop, got some. Uh, this is the dressing. That's her cold there. I don't, I don't know. You can find them on eBay, but as after the dressing was added, it's nice and soft, nice texture to it. You don't have to add anything else to it. it just makes it soft. See, easier for the pouch coming in and out of it. You know what I mean? But that's after uh, that. Change, I did some color changing on some dye. That's the first time I ever did that, but I came up with this color. It's not saddle tan. It's something else. It's got a little bit of brown and, and uh, some saddle tan kind of mixed together there and some lightening up stuff. But that's what I come up with. <laughs> this dry overnight and I wanted it to set up a little bit and just make this that's really neat isn't it I like that color isn't that cool and it's gonna match with this right now the thing that I need to do here oh well, I need to make sure that that's gonna fit so I'll be scrunching that in and I'll have to stitch this before I close it up so that's something else I'll have to do uh, before I can close it but I wanted to stop 
the video for a second to talk about how this goes in. Now, obviously, it's going to be right about here-ish. And it's going to have a break in here, right? Something, a uh, blade stop, right? Something to keep it from going. And you can do uh, any thickness. If you want to go thicker, something like this would be good. And if you had something thick in there, see what I mean? It stops the blade from going. And you would have a curved design. I'll have to cut a curved design in a piece. But it'll go up and the blade will come in and out. And but. That'll keep it from puncturing through. So it's about the thickness of the blade, literally the thickness of the blade. So this will be a good size to use. And then, but you fold this up, you want to take a look at where it's going to go. So you would want to sandwich the knife first and just to double check where everything goes. So you know how far it goes and kind of start squeezing this so you kind of have an idea and once you get your idea of where it all is going to go you can cut out the excess now this is gonna be like this so now i've got my indentions from doing that now i know where i need to cut and it needs to have a uh, elastic elastic for the uh, snap so when you unsnap it and you want to make sure you do the right side too you want it to be like this right hand pulls out and then you would unsnap from one side or the other so you need to make sure you're doing it all correctly from the right side and but you can cut out now that you know where that is you can cut out this excess because this doesn't have to be uh, uh doesn't have to be a flat design on the end here it, it should be a flat design on the other end and that's just for adding holes and you know leg straps or whatever you want to do to it so i just wanted to add that little bit but see that's how i got my indentions here and i can go ahead and take like a like a marker and kind of that way i can i know where that is and then i can cut around that all i gotta do now is cut out this line this line right here but i don't want to cut it too far because remember you need to know where the blade's going. You got to see what I mean? You're going to need to know where that blade is so that you can, uh, you don't cut too much of it. You want to make sure you have enough of it left because it's going to be like this. It will actually, it's going to be, it's going to be like this because it'll be behind the back. This part will be behind the back and it'll be something along these lines right here. Something like that. So you got that part and you need this part to fold over and you need this part to come over and snap. So just remember that before you start cutting off too much material. But you want to leave it attached to the rest of the sheath so you're not you're not having to rivet on a bunch of stuff. See what I mean? You try and use the solid piece of leather because you want it to be one solid piece. So you're not cutting and chopping and, and tacking on stuff that is already there. It's already there. You just have to cut it out to the right shape. And that's what I'll be doing now. Is trying to get that right shape. goes in there like that 
you'll have to cut off some excess, right? This will go in. You want to have a little gap here at the top. And I only do that in case, you know, the individual decides to go playing in the water. And, you know, you need to have a place to drain the water out so your blade doesn't end up full of water. It's just good to have a little gap here for the runoff so this doesn't become a big pocket of water or something. You never know. I try to think ahead. It's always worked for me in the past. And every every other sheath out there, even Kydex, they, they tend to put that runoff for the same reasons. Even more blades and that stuff. You'll see there's a tiny hole in the bottom. That's not for a neck knife. That's for runoff of water anyway we don't want moisture sitting in so uh this part is set up this is reversed like this because if the individual is right-handed it has to be on the inside i've put a lot of thought into these things over the years you <laughs> me personally when i make one i i like to be able to reach behind i'm grabbing it with this hand anyways i'm right-handed right and if you're left-handed the same thing Instead of putting it on the outside, because you got to fiddle with it and try and figure out where it is. Or if you're sitting down, you know, you're getting in and out of your vehicle or uh, chair or whatever, and then the button catches something and unsnaps and your knife goes falling out. Doesn't make no sense, does it? So I put it on the inside. So I reach around, boom, unsnap it. And of course, I've got to do the elastic stuff. Anyways, this will come out, boom, grab your knife. So there's been a few changes along the way of making these things. Now I could make this shorter. But it's got to have room. See, with putting this in there, right? I could make this short if I wanted to. But, you know, when you get to putting gear and then straps and then a couple of holes, by that time, you need those extra, however long that is, at the end, right? So that you can do all that extra stuff. Have the snaps and all that stuff. Anyway. When you spots like this in the, in the build, because I'm... I, you know, I try to play some music, you know, and you kind of see the long process because this stuff takes hours to do. And, you know, a lot of folks ain't got time for that, right? You know, you're trying to get to the point. And, okay. Now, in some cases, see, I haven't finished, I got still got to do the stitching and a bunch of other stuff. But, um, in some cases here, say I use adhesive, I have to leave this stuff and let it dry overnight. And there's a few other things like this one here, I have to let this dry overnight. Put some adhesive in there and this is so an uh, individual can switch up different ferro rods you can do a uh, half inch or you can go uh, smaller it doesn't matter any ferro rod and you just snap off the end that's what i do i usually stick one end of this in the vise so i don't want this big long ridiculous thing i just take one half of it and just snap it and then i do a short but it's still a half inch and it's got plenty of meat there for you to grind on anyway that's what i do so but that will be like right up in here something like that that's just the layout of things but one of the things is when you get to making a project like this it's kind of like uh mopping a floor and <laughs> i like to have alternatives for things in case i mop myself in a corner and i have to figure out how to get my way out and it's just like i said like mopping a floor you get yourself in a corner and you're looking for other alternatives so I use like Chicago screws, like the, the, these are the crazy ones. They're like, uh, they're stainless and they're longer than, than normal. And then, uh, I've got some that are super short and I got some that are long and crazy, but I use these in the event that I mop myself into a corner and I don't know which ones I ever want to use. Like I've got different styles, some that have little gaskets to them, some that don't. And I keep these on hand. I wanted to share this with you guys because you can get, uh, these uh, that's LQ Industries or something like that, but uh, you could end up with one of these and you could do like something like this. Now, I have to make that hole a bit bigger, but you get the point. That can go through and that can work to make my straps, mount my straps in. I wanted to share before I moved a little bit too far into this and you don't get to see that part. But I don't know what knife you're going to be making yours for, but if if you were making one like this, you know, it would turn out something like that. Depends on how you mop yourself into a corner. <laughs> anyway, I got to finish this part up and then I'll come right back. You do it with the Chicago screw. See? <laughs> yeah. See that look cool? And this goes right over the top. And any size frail rod, right? Basically larger to smaller. And you just customize it yourself. And yeah, the next step for this is... Uh, Get it closed up and then start working on the back here. 
and then I'll show you that real quick because it this is just simple stitching up. You guys get the point on that. All right, now it just has to dry. Has to sit here and I'll come back again. <laughs> Another round of this. The elastic. You're just gonna. I mean, you can do it two different ways. You can come in from the inside, or you can come in from the outside. Either way. You just, uh, you can use a hair tie or anything like that to do the trick. There's industrial grade crazy stuff that you can get from, uh, any arts and crafts store. It's usually in the bracelet making section. If you guys know what I'm talking about. Some of you already know that. Just run that right through there. And just like that. And then you can get your adjustment for how tight you want it. Like that. You can pull it together and just, you can do a little fast knot or you can do like I do. I usually take thread and then I just want, uh, bind it together or just run a needle through either way. Uh, but like I said, you can just pull it tight and you could just do this. That's another way of doing it. Just tie it. Just like that. Get it nice and tight. Or you can run a rivet through it if you don't want to do it like this and just cut off your excess. You don't want it getting in the way of trying to close it. Then get yourself a, a lighter. I usually use my torch for all the projects. So I've got to do the threading and everything else. So I've got to clean up, but just like that. And it gives you that. And then now when it's fastened, it's fastened up and then you reach behind it's like oh i gotta get my knife out it just flings right open just like that well that's all there is to it <laughs> like i said out sideways for a rod you can do a shorter one that's usually the average length of any regular fair one fair rod i threw this on there it's just to tie down uh like i said it's not for me it's for somebody else but there you go pretty cool huh